All right, read it out loud. And, and he gave, gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers. Go back up to the verse before that. Start at verse 7. Mark is said, read. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he is he gave what? Yes. Say it louder. Yes. Say it one more time. Yes. Keep reading. Just read. Yeah. Just jump to verse 11. Mark has said, read. So what is the prophetic according to verse 7? It's a gift. Say it's a gift. And jump over to 1 Corinthians 12. What is that? Oh, you're okay. Don't get nervous. Just get off quick. Verse is a what? Gifts. Gifts. Now you see gifts in, in 1 Corinthians 12. You see gifts in... Um, Ephesians, and they say two different things. Two different things. Now, what happens in the prophetic is we we get stuck at the charisma gift, and we never learn the functionality, the operations, and the protocol of the doma gift. What's the difference? Ask me what's the difference. What's the, difference? the charisma gift comes as the spirit wheels. Mm. All right. It's not, it, it doesn't carry any authority to govern. It doesn't have any protocol. It doesn't have any type of headship. But the Doma Corinthians 12, which the Bible speaks of, are administrations. They deal with how the government of the kingdom is administrated. So a Doma gifted person and a charisma gifted person do not rank on the same level. Are you hearing this? See, your gift is not your grade. Your gift is not your level. Now, y'all know there are different levels in God. So there are different levels in the prophetic. Second Corinthians 3, we go from what? But that glory will one day diminish. Are you hearing this? Because glory diminishes and glory excelleth. So there's a glory of the prophetic that's needed in the earth today. And if we stay in the charisma gift and we don't enter into, into the doma gift, that's when the prophetic becomes irrelevant. First Samuel 9 and 9. First Samuel 9 and 9. 9 and 19, I'm sorry. First Samuel 9 and 19. It says that they said they were going to see the seer. Say the seer. The seer. The seer. Now, why is that important? Because they're in a culture where the prophetic is now being diminished to just a seeing gift. Are you hearing this? And, and the Bible says at those times, prophets were not known as prophets. They were known as seers. Why? Because somewhere between Moses and Samuel, there was a lack of understanding in the prophetic. And the glory of Moses had diminished and the glory of Samuel had to come on the scene to reinstitute the office of the prophet. Yeah. Are y'all hearing this? Yeah. That's like I'm almost preaching. They just slow down, don't it? <laughs> so the Bible, when it talks about the history of the patriarchs and the fathers of the faith, there it mentions Moses. This is in the book of Acts, chapter 7. Acts chapter 7, connect that to 1 Samuel 9 and 19. Now this is boot camp, so I'm going to teach until you say uncle. I'm going to teach until you pop. So when you start feeling confused, that's good. Someone's got the backwards. And you, you want to understand everything. You're going to understand it here, and then it's going to register here later. Did you hear me? Okay, so for, in, in Acts 7, um, it, when it deals with the prophetic office, it skips the prophetess Deborah, it skips all the prophets in between Moses and Samuel, and it only deals with Moses and Samuel. Because in 1 Samuel 9 and 19, what happened in the culture of Israel, they reduced the prophetic to one dimension of the prophetic. Are you here? Third, one, it's prophet Nabi. That's
That's one Hebrew word. Prophet, Nataf. That's another Hebrew word. Prophet, Chose. That's another Hebrew word. Now, Chose is the seer. I just gave you three Hebrew words. Chose is the seer. Nabi is the officer. Nataf is the custodian of the supernatural. Are you hearing? He's going to put his super on your natural. I said, no, you said it right. Yeah, what do you mean by that? That means God is going to take the thing you've been carrying in the spirit and put some natural around it. Don't miss that right there. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And the word was made flesh. And Jesus said, John chapter 6, are not my words spirit. So the, the word exists in spirit form. And then God takes flesh, wraps it around the word. And then the word starts living in your house. Y'all hear this? So they, they are custodians of the supernatural. So the, the God takes his super and put it on your natural. The prophet takes your super and then put natural around it. It brings something that's lodged in the spirit and it makes it manifest into your world. That's the Nataf prophet. And then you have the Nabi prophet. It, it deals, most people, when they talk about Nabi, they, they, they mention the definition um, bubble up. That's what it means, to bubble forth. But they rarely mention that it also means that they're an officer. The Nabi is the official officer of God. So going back to 1 Samuel 9 and 19, they reduce the prophetic to one third of its function. The seer. So Samuel is raised up, and the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 2 that God establishes him as a prophet. In other words, he reinstitutes the office of the prophet. Are you hearing this? And the first thing that you see God attract to that Doma gift, that Doma office, is a prophetic sound. <laughs> It says in 1 Samuel chapter 10, it says a company of prophets met Samuel. Yes. Now here it is, all these prophetic people, because you don't just have prophets, you don't just have the Doma gift of prophecy, that's the officer, that's the custodian of the supernatural, that's the seer. And you don't just have the charisma gift of prophecy, that's the prophesier. Are you hearing this? And a prophesier normally uses the gift of prophecy as a catalyst to release the word of the Lord. So that gift of prophecy uh, acts as the trigger on the gun uh, and that bullet could be the word of knowledge. That bullet can be discerning of spirits. That bullet can be uh, the word of wisdom. I mean, God uses prophecy as a weapon. Are you hearing this? Now, so not only do you have Doma gift, the office of the prophet, not only do you have uh, the charisma gift, the gift of prophecy, but you have prophetic types. You have the psalmist, the minstrel. Ask me what a psalmist is. Are you popping yet? Almost. Almost good. Ask me what a psalmist is. A psalmist is a singer who sings under prophetic anointing. The difference between a singer and a psalmist is a singer sings to be heard. A psalmist sings what they hear. Are you hearing this? A psalmist don't care if you don't like the song. A psalmist don't care if you sit on them and praise and worship. They're singing a minstrel and a musician. A minstrel plays to be heard and a, a no, a musician plays to be heard and a minstrel plays what they hear. Are you hearing this? There are sounds because whenever God raises up a prophet Brian Carr, he releases a sound to accompany the movement. That's why you see Samuel have to be established as a prophet to reinstitute the Doma, to reinstitute the government. I need to slow down. That foundation, the sound couldn't come. He was met by a company of prophets that had harps and timbrels and, and, and uh, they had all kinds of instruments because the, the, the prophetic is wrapped in a sound. And that's why some of y'all haven't heard God the way you want to hear him because you're listening for a voice and sound. 
de tabac. If you get in the sound, the voice will follow. Adam heard the sound of God's voice walking in the garden. You, he, he can detect the voice, but the sound led him to the place where the voice was. Amen. That can interpret. Daniel was a dreamer. He was an interpreter. Uh, it, just so many prophetic foundation necessary so that the multiple prophetic anointings can come under its schooling where you, and this is where you get to the school of the prophets because a prophet is not someone that's just blabbing a bunch of mysteries matter of fact a prophet has to learn how to be more quiet than they are vocal are you hearing this so if a, the, see the prophetic is a technology if i give you an iphone and all you do is talk on it then you need to throw away your iphone and buy you a flip phone because the technology of the iphone does more than allow you to hear a voice the prophetic picks up movements in the spirit the prophetic releases Amen. divine sounds so that god can move around in the sound the prophetic establishes god's authority the prophetic brings systems into alignment back with the kingdom of God. The prophetic allows a prophet to go to a president and speak on live TV at Daystar and then White House security is knocking at their door the next day. That's what the prophetic is for. It's not just a vocal gift. It's a doma gift. It's packaged with power and technologies and weapons and resources and go-tos and... So that's what happens when we come to the prophetic. We're waiting on the prophecy, and just by getting in the atmosphere, just if you if you if you watch him on TV, that's right. it begins Amen. to be released. Amen. Not just the gift of prophecy, the spirit of prophecy. Yes, sir. Yes. Multiple prophetic anointings. So that's the first thing that that Samuel um, that you see God attracting to Samuel's mantle of the prophet. Now just use another word, say mantle. mantle. Your mantle is your spiritual dress code. Mm. And half the church needs a fashion makeover. Okay. It's your spiritual dress code. It's how you look in the spirit. Put on the armor yeah. of the Lord. Amen. The full armor. Now, why do you put on the armor? Because God puts on the armor. It's not your armor, it's his armor. He said, I'm giving you my helmet called salvation. I'm giving you my breastplate. I'm giving you my shield called faith. I'm, I'm girding your loins. I'm, I'm giving you, I'm giving you my armor. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the robe of righteousness. Put on the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That's the mantle. The mantle is what the prophet wears, not in the natural, but in the spirit. Are you hearing this? So that when he shows up in the spirit, he doesn't look like him, he looks like Jesus. So demons have to obey the mantle as if they would obey Jesus. It establishes his authority. That's it, that's it. Are you with me? So they reduce the prophetic to one third of his function. He said, let's go to a seer. So God raises up Samuel to reestablish order in the prophetic and government in the prophetic so that the full expression of the prophetic could be released. Then he established the school of the prophets. That's when you see the prophetic types. So where are you classified in God's prophetic world? You have to know that. Are you a Doma prophet? Are you a gifted person in the prophetic? Because everybody can prophesy. Right. Right. Prophet Carl mentioned that last night. Everybody can prophesy. That's first word to learn how to prophesy. Matter of fact, Hebrews 5, it says you can exercise your, your spiritual senses. How? By reason of use. That phrase right there, it literally means by practice. Mm. That word usage, it means practice in the original language. So you can practice the prophetic. You can learn two or three witnesses, let what? Every word, Every word be established. Now how do you practice? You don't practice by just going 
conjuring words up. The best way to stir up that gift inside of you, I'm going to get to that in just a minute, after I deal with where you are in your classification, but the best way, let me just say this right now, but the best way to stir up that gift thing is to get around a Doma prophet. See, you come in here, it's like the prophets of Israel going to Obadiah. Prophet Karn is your Obadiah. See, y'all can't, you know, can't respond to that because you don't know what Obadiah is. Imagine that, who is Obadiah? Do you know who Obadiah is? No. Obadiah was the man, I would like to say he's a prophet. He was a prophet because he was a servant. Now, while I'm talking to you, the Holy Spirit is bringing things to my remembrance. He was a prophet. He was a son of Elijah, a spiritual son of Elijah, a servant of Elijah, which meant he was a prophet himself under the tutelage of Elijah. All right? That he, the prophets of Israel, when Jezebel was out to kill him. You got to understand, the enemy is out to kill your anointing. And, but he's not your greatest enemy. Your greatest enemy is not the enemy. But the devil's not even God's enemy. He's not big enough to be God's enemy. He's our enemy because we were his replacement. But even though he's our enemy, he's not our biggest enemy. Second Corinthians 2, it says we are not ignorant of Satan's devices lest he get the advantage over us. What is it saying? He can only take advantage over you in not reference to the scripture. It is not of God. God. Every prophecy has already been prophesied. <laughs> That's deep right there. Every prophecy has already been prophesied. That's Acts chapter 3. It says how God spake by the mouth of all of his holy prophets. All of them prophesied the same thing. Now that's, I, I need to pull out of that. That's real deep for some people. All right, let me go next. So it's the foundation. Then you have the spirit of prophecy. I was going to go there earlier. That's First Samuel. I think it's chapter 19. When the Bible said um, Saul came around to come here, the prophets. And he began to prophesy. Why did he do that? The Bible says the spirit of God came over him at a well. It's hard for me to do this because every time I talk like this, I start getting revelation. That's so powerful. It said the Spirit of God came over him at a well. Now he was at a well outside of the city where Samuel was on his way to see Samuel. And on his way to see Samuel, he stopped at a well. And the Spirit of prophecy came on him at a well. That means the prophet had a jurisdiction and a territory where the spirit of prophecy can be released to create an atmosphere where anyone that came near the perimeter got infected with the prophetic anointing. Oh my God, oh my God. So, and, and, and that's, now the spirit of prophecy is where you get into prophetic glory. That's revelation, that's all that kind of stuff. When he was talking about uh, the glory matures everything that's in you. Uh, let me show you how. When Saul got around the company of the prophets and the spirit of prophecy came on him, what did he do? Prophesy. He saw prophesying, but how did he prophesy? He stripped naked. The beast inside of him came out. The prophetic brought the worst out of him. Wow. Are y'all hearing this? The prophetic will bring the best or the worst out of you. Are you hearing this? Yeah. That's why some people promise not they just get mean. They just <laughs> some people promise not they just get rude. They just I mean it's bringing the worst out of them because the glory will mature what's there. Mm. Yeah. Wow! I'm gonna go up there. That's the spirit of prophecy. All right, but the prophet the prophet was so powerful that the spirit of prophecy infected the whole city. You can even breathe and not become prophetic. If you breathe, it was contagious. If you didn't want to be prophetic, don't breathe. If you breathe, it's too late. <laughs> the prophetic was airborne. 
It was hovering in the atmosphere wherever Saul, wherever Samuel went. And anybody that came around it got infected with prophetic power. Someone say, I'm infected, infected. with prophetic power. Prophetic power. Say it again, I'm, I'm, infected I'm infected with prophetic power. Prophetic power. So, the spirit of prophecy, there are four main spheres, okay? Now, out of the four spheres, each sphere is multidimensional, which brings me back to where I am. So, I can prophesy under a gift of prophecy. I can prophesy as a prophet. That's a big difference. And I can prophesy under spirit of prophecy because it's overlapping. And the more, you know, I'm not going to really get into all that today. But let's just start at prophecy. All can prophesy. All can prophesy. All right? So prophecy can take place even if you don't have the gift of prophecy because you come under a spirit of prophecy. Even though the spirit of prophecy and the gift of prophecy is two different spheres, they can cross each other. Are you hearing this? Yes, and then I can prophesy without being a prophet, without having the gift of prophecy, just under a spirit of prophecy. There's one way I can prophesy on that basic level. Another way I can prophesy just by hearing God. Because hearing God and prophesying is two different things. Now for office prophet, They hear the voice of God. That's their office. That's their authority. That's their relationship. But for a budding prophet or someone learning in the prophetic, just because you got a word don't mean God spoke to you. Uh. Prophecy as charisma or as a gift, I can't make a dryer act like a dishwasher. I can do the gifts of the spirit to the appliances. It gets the energy. <laughs> and it's too deep. I think I'm going to camp off right here. Y'all just have to come to another city. <laughs> <laughs> but you're built to function like this. Stand up. Are they standing up now or should they sit down? Stand it up now. <clears throat> you're, you're, you're in that gift or you're in that all can prophesy with him. So we're good. We're not missing nothing. Just because I'm stopping, you're not missing anything. Okay. Into that office. So you need adequate training schooling so you, you've been infected with prophetic power once again I want you to thank God for infecting you with prophetic power just go ahead and thank him he's in I don't get none of y'all talking I hope you rest on you the prophetic gifting inside of you the prophetic anointing inside of you they will not be killed they will not be stopped they will be protected in Jesus mighty name come on 15 more seconds open your mouth 